Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Love and Heartbreak Real Estate Unfiltered. I'm here with uh, Lamore Nasher. Hi. And uh, she is an amazing agent in the city who's been in the business over 20 years now at this point since 2003. Uh, she started in rentals, has moved to sales, uh, investment sales. She's done development sites. She's worked on some, you know, very large deals and been at development companies in New York City. And man, does she have stories. So I am so excited. We're going to try not to waste too much uh, you know, time here today because I'm just going to let you know you really roll with uh, you know, more of the stories. But maybe you just want to give everybody a little more with why real estate? What kind of got you, you know, what kind of got you into it? How did you get into the business? So, uh, so it starts with a family. Yeah. <laughs> My husband started. Um, we came to America actually to, to make art. Um, in fashion and music and, and vis visual arts. So it was a very good way for us to be our own bosses and control our schedules and do our arts. Um, soon after we joined, I mean, he joined, he brought me in. Um, seven months later, we realized that uh, if we're not doing this 100%, it's never going to be 100%. So um, less art, more real estate. Um, and then we started rolling. So after the fifth year of working together, um, it was the 2008 financial crash. crisis. Yeah. And I was pregnant with our first daughter. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. So that time everything was uh, up in the air. We didn't know what's going to happen. Um, two of us doing the same thing that didn't yield much was very very um, scary. So he f he found another um, another venue, and I stayed. And um, that's from then on. This is what I have been doing. Wow, wow. art to uh, art to real estate. So, and I, I mean, I just want to go into it because the, you know, the international aspect. You're from, I'm I know from, where, but you're from where originally? I'm from Israel, Israel. originally. Okay. Um, I also lived um, um, as a, as a child. I was uh, an embassy child. What's uh, what they call? So we lived in many places around the world. Okay. Um, I lived in South America. I lived in Israel. I lived in Australia. I live in New York. So that's that's one of the things I really wanted to hit on because I don't think we've had some folks with such a diverse international you know experience before, and I have to imagine that. You know, you growing up like that and living, you know, through many of those areas has to be an asset in the New York City real estate landscape as you've been working through, right or wrong, like being able to talk to all those different yeah. cultures with how much of an international city New York City is, right? So has that been something that's been a big benefit to you, being able to it know has. and understand cultures? Um, and I like think that? specifically New York City has benefited, uh, mm -hmm. has benefited me because it is uh, a melting pot of yeah. the world. Um, I came to realize that we're actually all the same. All the same. It doesn't matter. We all have basic needs, and housing is one of them. It's one of the first. It also means family, and it also mm -hmm. means value. It also means uh, future. And basically, this in this industry, uh, my international background has helped me because I don't identify as anything except for human. So the, the, the first thing I hate to be said, you're just a broker. I always say, no, I'm not. First of all, I'm a person. And so this is where I start. I'm a, I'm a person, and all of us are. And because I came from this diverse background, I get, I get that sometimes um, one, one culture would say the same thing in a, in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and I tap on it because I know how to, as a broker, we have to mediate between all the sides. So sometimes I find this um, balance because I understand them. So if I can cross to their side just a second and see what they see, I don't need to cross to anyone's side. I know what they think. Yeah. So. so, I mean, that can be, I think, a huge advantage, but there's also been a lot of instances, right, like you know very well how to resonate and mediate with the, you know, Israeli culture and things like that, having from, you know, been there. But you've also had some very interesting, you know, Israeli clients that have maybe been a little challenging to mediate. So Fair. what's, you know, maybe an example of one of those stories, <laughs> either development sites or, um, uh, you know, having to do crazy things at the closing to, you know, in those instances where it all gets you to a point, but there's a little, I think, something else you have too. So maybe you could share one of those. Um, be happy to. Um, so I've been working with a lot of uh, Israeli clients, of course, and we feel very natural working together. We're very heated. And uh, <laughs> we're very heated. Uh, so sometimes we yell at each other and we take it uh, light. But when other people are getting this heat, 
they don't see it in a in a very similar way. Right. Uh, so one of the stories is that I worked with um, this seller that uh, owned multiple units um, on 58th Street with his ex-wife. Uh, so I had to sell his units and then selling her units. So I was controlling the building more or less. One of the closes... And marriage counselor, I'm sure. Exactly. <laughs> marriage counselor, getting the screams from both sides. Um, and uh, yes, definitely not taking sides. Not taking sides because I wanted both of their business and I did it well. Yeah. Uh, and they were competing with each other. So it was good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting more? Uh, so it was really good for me. Uh, but uh, the last closing actually for him was very challenging. Um, in a way, he didn't care about the last apartment. So he didn't want to invest in, in that apartment more. Uh, coming, um, as you know, contracts are basically delivered, uh, we have to deliver appliances that are in working order. Um, but this guy didn't get, um, didn't take that too seriously. So coming to the closing table, um, we, we did a walkthrough just an hour earlier and the stove didn't work and some appliances, other appliances in the kitchen didn't work. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling them everything should be fine, don't worry. He's a re reasonable man, we're gonna get to the closing table and we'll sort this. And we get to the closing table and um, unfortunately did not want to sort anything and said, what doesn't work, doesn't work. That's it. Take it or leave it. And they say, we don't want to take it because we don't want to leave it either. But can you fix that? So for a, about an hour, we tried to resolve everything. And they eventually, the buyers were very nice and said, you know, we're simple. We don't mind changing these things, but the stove, but at least the stove, you know, we need to eat when we get in. And he's... He got very frustrated and agitated and stood up like this. <laughs> <laughs> and he had some things on his hands, so it sounded really bad when he did this. And he started screaming and said, I'm walking out. I'm walking out of this room. It was very loud. And they were Asians. So you can imagine, like, such a different culture. Very different cultural Very different styles there. Yes. And uh, it got heated. They were only <laughs> red, but they didn't say anything. And he said he's walking out, and he literally walked out. Now, his attorney was not Israeli, but working with him 18 years made him the same, I guess. <laughs> uh, so he also shouted, yeah. you can walk out too if you want to. So they did. And they were about to leave. And I said, wait. And I'm sitting there frustrated, not sure what to do. But I'm looking outside and Home Depot is there in Midtown. And I'm telling them, wait, give me half an hour. Give me half an hour. I'm sorting this out. And I go out to Home Depot and I ask, what's the best deal for a stove that you have? $600. I took it. I go back in <laughs> and I show them, you got a new stove, guys. <laughs> and the guy was still walking somewhere, you know, but eventually his attorney calls, calls him back. He comes back and we close. Wow. And I saved the deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's uh, one of my Israeli stories. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the, the, did we ever speak again? Shout? Me and the seller? That's the, a good question, right? Did we ever I speak don't know. again? Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> No. So that that went beyond the point of the friendly uh, Israeli heatedness is what you're uh, is what you're saying with that one. So yeah, um, yeah I mean, talk about the interesting confrontation, both you know confrontation there and actually having to, you know, I've heard of people and agents offering credits and things like that, but never actually physically going and buying the stove on the spot to. It was very uh, important for them. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clearly, they needed to cook. I mean, that that to me strikes me as an instance where you know it's funny because I was talking with. You know, my son the other week where I was like, hey, if you're negotiating, you know, you have to be willing to walk away because a pretzel vendor was trying to charge us $7 for a pretzel. And I was like, no, no way. And then, you know, $5 <laughs> afterwards. Right. So, you know, in those instances, like you had some clients willing to walk away. But I think you've also, you know, along the similar vein with the Israeli, uh, you know, clients had some on the development side where you were the one to, you know, maybe walk away. So maybe tell yes. us a little bit about, about <laughs> uh, So that. that was a very nice um Actually, the beginning was nice, I should say. It yeah. was, a, it was a, a client that I sold him a sight unseen um, in East Harlem, um, meaning that we never met. Um, over a phone conversation, we connected. And then uh, for three months, I was literally working and finding him a commercial property, a, a site for development, which is something I never did before. So it was learning a, a learning experience for me that turned out to be um, very very important uh, for my real estate but uh, so I did appreciate that and um, and then you know selling the area and selling the site and selling everything 
was difficult because we didn't have a lot of um, any, any interaction or acquaintance. So why would he trust me? So I worked with him, introducing the area with the FaceTime, asking people around, um, you know, um, how the area developed and what do they think about the area. So everything was showing him, not through my mouth, um, what is about this area that he should, you know, uh, acknowledge and, and no. Eventually, we had a deal. Eventually, um, I had him sign a, a commission agreement because in commercial properties, you're not always getting a commission mm -hmm. um, in a normal way. Um, and then that commission basically uh, was 2%. Um, we agreed. Everything is fine. We're working towards a closing. We never met each other again. Um, on the day of the closing... And you really went above and beyond for this thing, too, with this property, because you were like, Weren't you like going to people on the street and things like that? And yeah. Like doing all sorts of crazy stuff too. So yeah. I mean, it's it's an area that you can't really uh, put a stamp on and say hundred percent what it is because it's a, an area that is still developing. Right. So for me, it was if I tell him that it, he may think that, and I would understand him, right? Yeah. Why me? And why from her? So I had gone on Facetime tours with him and started asking doorman. How, how do you feel about the area? How long have you been working here? Uh, how did it improve over the years? I was asking uh, parking lots people um, about the area. I was asking nurses. I was asking random people on the street. Yeah. And he saw that. So it was really two things. It was building trust. It was, um, you know, showing him what people on the street really think. Yeah. Um, and also identifying a very good deal. Hmm. comparing it to other areas, but also to this area, it was a very good deal. Yeah, so you did a ton of work, you got him a very good deal, and then he's, he's coming, <laughs> and then and then we he's coming could, in. And he's flying in for the closing, specifically for the closing, and uh, we're seeing the site, he's very happy. The other agent is telling him how great I am. He says how great I am. And then we jump into a cab together, and he's, you know, telling the taxi driver, just run fast, run fast. And then he tells me, no, I don't think, I think you would have done the same thing for me for a quarter of the commission. I said, what? No way. So you could have done it for 1%. I said, no, even 2% is low. He said, yes, but you could have. And I said, but you signed 2%. You signed the agreement for 2%. And he said, yeah. And he said, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to pay you 1% and that's it. Just call it a day. All right. And I tell the taxi, excuse me, I'm the one who's making the calls. Please stop the cab. Please stop the cab. <laughs> Stops the cab, and I tell my client, listen, if you want to pay me 1%, I'm going to put a lien on this property, and you're never going to buy this good deal, okay? Never. It's not going to be yours. And I leave, and I go out of the car, and he calls me, hey, wait, Connie, I was joking. I was totally laughing. I was joking. I was joking with you. Said, that wasn't funny. He said, come back, come back. I said, all right, you have to promise me you're not giving me the same thing at the closing table. I said, I promise you. You know I love you. I said, yeah. <laughs> We did go, we did close um, the, with this client. Um, if I had anything further with them, yes, I had a $17.5 million with them two years later. Wow, um, nice. So, yeah, and I did sell them another site, which was an hotel development, so. Very cool, yeah. very, very cool. I mean, in kind of the connecting theme, I might want to come back to some more stories in a second, but, you know, in both of those examples, like really knowing and understanding the, you know, those clients, even though you were representing the seller, I think you had like a lot of empathy and really cared about, you know, the Asian buyers like trusting you uh, in that, you know, process, even though you're on other sides, you know, the empathy and kind of like what you were doing in the lead up, even for this client to know like, hey, how's he really going to trust what I'm saying? And I really need to like, how do, how do I build that? You know, you also mentioned, you know, some of the basic needs that everybody has. So how do you... Like, how do you tap into that in terms of the empathy side of things? Or um, where do you feel that ranks just in kind of importance of how you operate and what you do with the, the real estate business? I know you mentioned family, value, future, and kind of like how all that kind of comes together. Um, so for a few years um, with this client and with others, I, I had done commercial deals. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really detached from all these emotions that I described mm, in the beginning. Because it's mostly just it's mostly the numbers. Money. Yeah. And this is what I have done for many years. Like uh. this was my main forte was working with investors' money, um, cap rates, 
and that's it. Yeah. Um, and I really missed the residential component with these feelings and emotions. Sometimes you would find, rarely you would find an investor that will tell you, I also care about South Exposure, <laughs> right? Because I need light. Right. It was rare. Um, normally, if it gets them more in the, the valuation, they care about South Exposure. Yeah, but, but not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, total, right. uh, normally, normally, they would take the second floor because it's less money, right? right. Um, but can get them more or less the same rents. Right. Um, so for me, going back to working with first-time home buyers brought everything back. It was um, a combination. First-time home buyers and investors basically are both looking for value mm. for different reasons but for value. Because the first time home buyers, what they see is a future, is the investment, is the family, all those things that are emotional. Mm -hmm. For investor, it's basically the money and the value. So I said, all right, I know how to find value. And now I, now, I definitely know about family and, and love and trust. And I think that the best combination for me would be to work with both of them because I can cater and literally help them from all my heart, because yeah. I know this, and I know this, and I know that for both of them, value has a meaning, but in different ways. Wow. Yeah. So, so that's interesting. Those pillars you hit on earlier from the real estate, family, value, future, that kind of like what ties both of those worlds together. And I think it's really interesting for people to hear like how different, you know, I mean, we in the industry generally know that, like how numbers driven commercial is and how much of a feel the, you know, the, the residential, uh, you know, aspect is. And it sounds like to me you've also had to give a lot more tough love on some more of that commercial side of things, right? Because it's much more numbers driven, yeah. and, you know, and things like that. And I think you have some, like, there's a funny story in there <laughs> on giving some tough love for clients. Yeah, that's who, a residential. That's right, a residential. right, right. Who, where, right. So both, you know, there's always transferable skills, right, between yeah. mediums that sometimes come into play and can actually help, right? So. Even if you're in a different, you know, medium, having that transferable skill is, uh, I think, just a wonderful, you know, thing because you never know how that might come in handy or as a tool. And oh, I, I think you have yeah. a good, you might have a good example of uh, that with a, a client. <laughs> I think it was a more recent client. Yeah, or something. that's very yeah. recent. Yeah. Um, that's a client that um, was looking uh, with me since the, the New Year's, um, and he said, "I have to buy something before the, the beginning of the year." Why? Because that's his dream, and he decided to get out of the rent cycle and find a home. And I, I worked with him. It was around New Year's. I'm Jewish. I didn't really, working. All right, let's go. We've seen everything we could. Um, and then he found something he liked. Um, after two weeks of contract due diligence, he decided to step back out. He gave me his reasons, made sense. I mean, I understood him. And I said, fine, you can still back out. We didn't sign it, so no problem. And then we worked really, really hard to find something else. We found this something. And the guy fell in love with it. I immediately saw the other agent um, wanting him in the building, in the community, and I tapped on that, played that card saying, you want him in the building, let's make it happen for him. And she worked very hard. I know this agent 20 years. Uh, we've had deals in the past, and she really, really worked hard to get him incentives from the, from the developer, from, mm -hmm. from our side. We did whatever we could. Eventually, it accumulated to be about $75,000 credits, back, uh, buying back um, rates, a lot of things that were accumulated to yeah. be $75,000 less. Very good deal. It's a very good deal. And um, moving forward, it was very excited, saw the property 40 times, maybe, you know, a lot of times. I'm exaggerating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many times. Eventually, we move forward. He brings an inspection to a new development. Everything that you could see that makes you understand that he's nervous. And we moved along. Everything he wanted, we gave him. And then, a day before the contingency expires, um, I get a phone call from his lender, and she's, you know, her voice was, you hear me? <laughs> he wants to jump out of the deal. <laughs> I said, what? And then she tells me he's been doing that two and a half years. Uh. And I'm shocked. <laughs> Telling her, excuse me, <laughs> you didn't tell me that from the beginning. And no way, I'm sticking <laughs> two and a half years. No way. But how can you leave this deal? Yeah. It's an amazing deal. Did you tell him? She said, no, no. And she's crying, really crying. <laughs> and I feel bad for this woman and decided to give him a call. 
And I call him and I'm like, I just spoke with your lender. And what's going on? He says, the contingency expires tomorrow. I think I'm just going to jump out. And I said, what? <laughs> Why? He said, I don't know. Maybe it's not the right time to do that. I said, okay, okay, Ali. Wait a minute. I just learned that you've been working with this woman two and a half years. He says, what? Did she tell you this? I said, well, I would never guess, you know? Two and a half years. And he said, no, it's not. I said, I don't care what you did with her. Let me just tell you this. Are you a baby? <laughs> What? I said, no, listen to me. You got an amazing deal. An amazing deal. I mean, I specifically, I, I'll tell you, I'm never going to be able to retrieve this deal for you. So I'm predicting that I'm not going to continue to work with you if you're getting out of this deal because I won't be able to retrieve the same deal ever. Ever. And I said, you had a woman that was literally working with you two and a half years. You had an attorney that did the same. You have a broker on the other side that was so willing and so wanting and so giving. You had a developer that was literally giving with open arms and a broker that worked with you since Christmas Eve to New Year's Eve every day. And we're, you know, just showing you again and again that this deal is good. So if you're jumping out of this, I don't think that we are going to continue to work together. Okay? And I really don't think you're going to find this deal in the next 10 years. Okay. And then he hangs up the phone. That was the conversation. <laughs> of course, it was stressful. <laughs> I have to swear, I smoked half a cigarette. <laughs> oh, She's a nasty boy. old habit. We're getting wild here. Half nasty a cigarette old. in. <laughs> <laughs> That's tame if you've listened to some earlier episodes. <laughs> oh, don't, don't tell my kids. <laughs> But Definitely going to send this episode to your kids, but okay, continue. <laughs> yes. But then, yeah, a day later, I was afraid to call him, but I did call his attorney and ask her, did you renew the contingency? He was like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and thankfully, we're closing um, on May 2. Oh, okay. So, so a couple days from the date of, of days, but the, he did of win. recording. I have to swear that it's such a good deal. Yeah. A very good deal, so I'm happy for him. Yeah. Well, they say the best time to buy was yesterday. The second best is uh, is today. So usually yeah. the, uh, the I'm market. glad he stuck around. Let's put it this way. Yeah. I know one day you will appreciate that. Uh, oh, of course. That of conversation. Course. I, I haven't seen it where it's uh, you know where that's not the case. Um, very 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 uh, fun story here. Um, I feel like we could keep going with with more and more stories. I usually like to just include a component. Um, you know, and on. Best piece of advice for someone new coming into the market. Best piece of advice for agent in the business. So, um, you know, what maybe if you know whether it's buyer, seller, renter, you know, you're picking up the phone, you're having that first conversation with them. What's your most frequent piece of advice or thing that you're usually you know telling them to get them prepared for the process? Um, my best piece of advice is to acquire knowledge and to have a very good broker. Okay. Very good attorney. And just make sure that they know everything that I know. 20 years, that's quite the task. I know. But they do get, <laughs> they do get a, like about 40-minute conversation when we start. Mm -hmm. um, and they ask. Yeah. They ask everything. I provide the gist. But uh, mainly then we focus on what, you know, the, the gist is in yeah. ten, first 10 minutes, but then I... So it's acquiring knowledge, but also I think if you have that team who's willing to continually educate you and give you that knowledge through the process, yeah. I think that's like really, yeah, important for people. because And I also, and also I know that the other side, since I'm a mediator, um, I don't see myself as a, an actress, but I think all of us are somewhat actors as brokers. Um, and tapping on that, I always like to literally sound to them what I get from the other side. So they can hear the tone. Mm -hmm. They're not there. Sometimes it's bad. It's not always great. But sometimes there are things that uh, they wouldn't get otherwise unless they hear the tone. So if you tell them that came with a the tone, they could, again, from my international experience, they could interpret it. What do you mean a tone? Yeah. But when you tell them they had a tone, you know, and then you expl explicitly tell them the tone, yeah. they can make whatever they want from it, which is good. It's good for me yeah. because maybe I'm interpreting wrong. 
Mm. So I trust my clients also, and I give them the benefit uh, of the doubt that they can teach me too. And I like to learn. So from everyone, I'm learning something. So I think this is something that I always like to. I learn from my sellers, I learn from my buyers, and then we incorporate our opinions, I guess. Um, I mean, the, the smartest people I know, I think it's the, the more you learn and the more you, you accumulate, the more you realize you don't know. And then sure. the more excited you are about, you know, learning more and learning from, I think, really everyone you, you know, you interact with, which, you know, in some ways is is partially a great piece of advice for agents. Would you say that's probably some of the best advice for agents or what, you know, if anything else would be, you know, for anybody who's in the business or a small business owner or anything like that? To be 20 years in real estate, of yeah. course. Um, Don't I get think, in. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance okay. is the best advice because um, I've been in the toughest markets, um, 2008, 2018, even 2003 was very slow, right? After 9-11, it just mm-hmm. started picking oh, up. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just continue to do what you're doing and trust, you know, that if you continue to do that, just add on more components of goods, that will be good. And stick around because uh, in tough markets, I see a trend that a lot of brokers are moving from one company to another it's not the company's fault look in yeah, look, look inside yeah. yeah so this is what i've been doing that's my best advice actually look inwards instead of blaming everyone yeah and um, i think it's healthy yeah i think for me the the personal journey has meant as much to the professional success as the you know professional you know professional journey which i think is really what you're you're know, speaking to there and for people who haven't experienced that sometimes that's hard thing to put your, you know, put your finger on, but um, definitely, I think a great, um, you know, great piece of advice. As you, as you look forward, right, and you're projecting things out, what is the real estate world? What do things look like for Lamar? What's your outlook on the, uh, in the future the industry? Yeah. I want to be a fashion designer. What are fashion you talking designer. about? Okay, great. Of course. When my kids uh, graduate artwork. college, yeah. of course, I have to go back to my art, art world that. and put all my efforts there. So every client that I have is literally, especially my investors, are afraid that are afraid of this day. Ah! And they know, yeah. they know that one day it will happen. I like so, that you didn't flinch or blink on that for for a second. That's that's awesome. I love of course. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody has a dead a, an end date to something, right? Yeah. I can't put an end date. Stephen Covey's. Seven uh, habits of highly effective people. Start with the end in mind. That's one of them. I think it's the seventh habit. So, um, so for me, that day will come. Whenever yeah. that day comes, I will know. Yeah. But that's my end goal. I love that. I love that. And so, you know, for a lot of people, you know, I, it's something we talk about so much internally. Where, you know, real estate is the vehicle, not the destination. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we so we're so blessed. I think to provide a service and to help people with their home and all these like crazy, you know, scenarios and things like that. But it really is, you know, small business for being able to, you know, create a life not only for the people we help, but for ourselves and actually, um, you know, get to, uh, you know, that better place or thing we want to be doing or more time with family or whatever it is for so many, uh, I think, people, whether you're a small business owner or a real estate agent or whatever the case might be. So that, I think, is a uh, is a beautiful place to put us as a pencils down and mic down on uh, on this episode. So I, I could keep going with all these like funny stories that you have because I think there's a whole lot more in the 20 years of experience. So we'll have to I'll have, we'll have to, to listen to yours one that. day. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to listen to some of the other episodes. So we appreciate everybody joining us for this week's episode of Love and Heartbreak, Real Estate Unfiltered. Uh, we might have some bonus episodes with this season coming out. Otherwise, we'll probably be back uh, for season three at some point in the future. Stay tuned for a uh, launch date. We appreciate Lamore being here today. Thank you. And if you like, please, uh, you know, share, subscribe, thumbs up. And uh, we appreciate everybody who took the time to listen and hope you got something where you can have fun with. Um, help some other people as well as we you know, talked about here. And uh, enjoy, everyone. Take care. Bye.